Right. Okay, I'm here with Leo Robertson and we both do writing things. Oh, where's your picture gone? You can't see me? No, it's just a little picture. Oh dear, I can see myself. Uh, Let me off and on again, the camera. Ah, oh, there you are. Cool. Hello. Hiya. <laughs> Hello. Um, we both do weird writing, don't we? We sure do. Is that fair to say? Probably. It's not weird to us, I would add. No. It's weird, weird to the, those looking in. <laughs> yeah. um, I made a couple of notes of things that we could start off talking, because I thought we could try and sound writery for like 10 minutes or whatever. Sure, I've got my own it. notepad, because I'll take notes if I forget stuff too. So Okay. And then after that, I don't know. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just see. Um, but I wasn't sure if... Because first off, we did a podcast, your podcast, Losing the Plot, yeah. Um, and is that episode out yet, or? No, I've I've <laughs> I've had a kind of wintry week of passing out on the couch, so it's mm. uh, maybe I'll get it done this afternoon. That's yeah. the plan. <laughs> well, that's okay. Well, when it's out, I'll put it in the description of this, so people can listen to both. Um, yeah. But I wasn't sure if it was on there or when we tried to do a recording of this last week and didn't manage it that we discussed um resources for story submissions like where we find uh places to send short stories to so i thought that might be quite useful because sure, that was yeah i th i use the horror tree mm -hmm. and you use what is it duotrope duotrope yeah ah. Oh. I can't remember what Gary said he used, but um I think he said horror tree submission grinder is another one. Oh yeah. Submission grinder, yeah. I maybe yeah. use horror tree because it's not just horror, it's kinda of, it's like um science fiction, weird thing, whatever really. They kind mm -hmm. of stick it all in. So yeah. um yes. Um so if you're a writer and you want to know where to send things, any of those is useful um yeah and uh, i thought it might be good if i just sort of said as well that if you're new rather than heading straight for like a major publishing place mm. um i start small and don't worry so much about it and look for small presses that do uh the kind of thing that you're interested in you know I looked for weird publishers that are smaller, mm. and I'm I'm working up. You know, that's my plan. I don't know about yours. Yeah, I think that's that's a, a good way to do it. A good thing if you use dual trope is you can find out if they give personal rejections. Mm. That way, like it's really nice just to hear that another human actually read your story at the beginning. Yeah. Because oh my god, like is this just? Is anyone at the other end of this email? That's what it felt for me when I started. Because mm. you get rejections all the time, and you're like. Oh dear, which which you will continue to do your entire career. Yeah. You'll understand what they mean a bit better once you've received a bit of personal feedback. And um people want to hear what you have to say. People want you to send their stories and they'll say nice things about it and then they'll have good advice. And uh Yeah, so I think I think that's a good yours is a good tip. Yeah. I'll tell you what one surprised me. Um I think it was Drabblecast. Drabblecast is like a really big major one. I think mm. it was either them or Pseudopod. I can't. I think it was Drabblecast, but um, gave me really good advice. Like when I submitted a story, and because they're so massive, I just didn't expect to hear anything at all. Mm. You know, just like a standard thing. They were like, "It would be better if you did this, and how about trying that?" And and I was uh, impressed. I thought it was helpful and good. Mm. Because when you look at the as a percentage game of who accepts what. Mm -hmm. You might get a story accepted that some bigger place would advise you how to change. Mm. If you're good enough but just not quite there for them, they'll give you advice that will get you one step up further than if you'd sent it somewhere further down that would we'll probably accept it as it is. Yeah. Very good way to... Um, you should always be punching up, as it were. Yeah. They say, you know, if you're a chess player, you should be losing most of the time because you should be playing against people who are so good that they're helping you get better. Mm. Um, That's good. Like yeah, so I kind of, um, uh, yeah, that's what I would advise. I have a story I think has been rejected like 20 times or something, but I have mm. so much faith in it 
like I love what it means yeah. that I keep improving it. And actually, once I I sent off, and if you send it off to a place, and again with Jewel Trope, and maybe they'll tell you on their site like how long it takes. Oh, it we'll takes three months to get back to you. Well, that's yeah. a bit of a stretch. But if it's like a month, no matter what you've sent out, if you've been reading and writing in that time, you'll be a better writer in that month. Mm-hmm. And if they get tips for you, like you'll just keep getting it better and better. So I'm really excited that it hasn't been published yet because I just thought of major ways to improve it, restructure it, and double things. I'm super excited to do so mm. um, because this is a long game as well. This is yes. a really long game. Yeah. If you don't get this tomorrow, my God, it like. It, like don't 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 stress it yeah it is that's that's the thing so I think when I first started I was like oh my god I have to be major like tomorrow and as mm. it as it's gone on I've kind of realized that this is you know most people don't get like a major novel published until they're 40 something and you know mm. even then it doesn't matter you know it's it's a long haul career isn't it writing unless your hands give up or something it's not some like something that you can stop anytime so just relax <laughs> yeah you're absolutely right you know that's something i thought about rejections as well as I've, it's like okay they rejected your piece did they come to your house and steal all your words no <laughs> did they cut off your hands no what have they really done <laughs> nothing you've still got the story as well yeah like it's such a tiny thing hmm. if if you if you let it be a tiny thing yes but, um Oh. How are you anyway? I'm great, thanks. Um, I'm really glad it's coming to the end of the winter. As you can see, it's sunny for once. I haven't seen the sun in months. It's actually really heavily snowing here. Oh. <laughs> so it's like we've done a swab. But um, yeah, no, I've got this um, writer's retreat that I'm starting tomorrow. Yeah, what's that all about? Um, yeah, so I won a spot at um, uh, an Essex Book Festival writer's retreat. And I'm going tomorrow. I, I've kind of got this timetable, but um, I don't know. Every time I look at it, I kind of get nervous. So I've got to be there tomorrow at 10. I know that. So, right. uh, yeah. Exciting. That's really cool. Do you know who else is on it? Um, I have no idea who the other people are. We're all just people who sent stuff in and were chosen. and So, yeah. Oh, that's so much fun! First time, yeah. I'm, it, I'm looking forward to it. I'm scared, but I'm also looking forward to it. Mm. It, it will be wondrous. So yeah, what? what we, are, sorry. Go on. Like another thing about writers is you get much faster rapport with them than anyone. So I think you'll leave with some good friends. I think so. I hope so. That'd be good. Yeah. 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 People who you can. If you if you start off giving advice to each other and things like that, it's quite a good habit to be in together. I think you know it's nice to be able to do that with other people who who you could maybe see face to face. You know. Mm. Yeah, I'm really. I mean, I th- I should try and set something up like that here, but I'm not. It's just never been from a work perspective solid how long I'm supposed to be here or not, or if I would be in Stavanger. And anyway. Would you be writing in English? And you can't like you can't get things published in in English here in Norway. You have to be writing in Norwegian. So, do you um, do you speak have, Norwegian? Uh, decently, but it's not been top of my list. Like I, of course, I studied very hard engineering at university to get here. Part of that, I went to Spain, learned Spanish, met my husband, who's from Paraguay, and he speaks Spanish. Mm-hmm. Uh, Though we speak English all the time here because English is best for his job, though in Spain we spoke only Spanish. So I was like, dude, I've been working. You know, it's like as an adult, you're like, how much of the present am I going to give up to make a better future? And eventually I was like, you know what? I deserve many hours of Netflix and like no (laughs) learning for a very long time because I've been pushing it very, very hard. And um, I know that when you push it very hard, the world just kind of goes, okay, great, let's keep going. And you have to be the one who says no and push back a little bit. So that's it's been. I know it's very frustrating for people here that I don't speak it so well, but mm. um, I'm I'm quite satisfied that I don't for the moment. Well, if you can get by, you know, yeah, that's that's kind of all this. And I think they speak pretty good English in Norway anyway, don't they? Oh yeah, like all my job is in English and everything. Um, there are opportunities within my job that I think you could only get if you speak Norwegian, but it would be amongst like if if the 
the department or the area is operating in the region, like the culture is so strong that I don't think you would be able to relate to them in any language. Because mm-hmm. it's just very, the things you want to talk about, the type of people that they are, are like, I don't think the culture would be so nice for you in that area. So if, if they're claiming it's a language barrier so they don't give you that work opportunity, it's not actually one you would want. Yeah. The next part, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So... Getting back to the writer thing, what what is it about, um, is there anything about other writers, perhaps online or anything like that, that, um, oh sorry, uh, the phone's ringing now, and my boyfriend, uh, fiance's family's here, so the dogs are here, <laughs> it's just very, be, very loud. You want to edit this and go and run and get the phone or something? No. You can, no? Can All right. It. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there anything about other like writers online that annoys you or any observations that you have? Or... Yes, there is. And um, I really, this is not an easy thing that we're doing. Um, it's very difficult for anyone to justify why they would have a new story for the world to see, right? It's, I can fall in and out of love with the story while I'm writing it one day mm. to the next to the next. Like getting a first draft down is a really, really tough task. Um, getting it polished is, is, again, you have to return to it and go, was there anything good there? Even though maybe you spent a whole month going, this is the best thing ever. Mm. And finally, you managed to get it published. You're like, oh my God, like all of those stages. Um, and if you had a writer group, like you could support each other around that and you could, um, you could really celebrate each other for how difficult this thing is. And, you know, the whole point of writing is I get this thing into the world and you read it and you go, yeah, that, you know, or, oh, I didn't think about it that way. Or I feel that way too. And, it's like it could just be this infinite good you know but when it comes to other writers um there's a real I think surface niceness yeah that um creeps me out (laughs) I can feel that it's false and I want to run from it and when we're talking about you know okay nobody gets a big novel published until they're 14 everything when I feel even the slightest increase in my celebrity go up (laughs) And I only feel it because of the creepiness around me. Yeah. It's, you know, if, if somebody big reviews something of mine and they like it, I'm like, I feel like, oh dear, here they come. <laughs> and it, you know, it's like, I just wish it could be nice all the time. Yeah. And, but I know that it's, there can, there can be a mean spiritedness, pettiness, bitterness, envy, mm-hmm. everything, everything that is a complete antithesis of literature um, and if somebody is like that, there's a good chance that what they're writing is bullshit. I have no interest in what it is. Mm. I have no interest in them as a person. And I wish they would just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I have no time for it. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it is. And if you feel anything like that, uh-huh. go sit in a rock, like do this thing, meditate, get it out of your head and come back because really I have no time for it. It's infectious. Mm. Have but you encountered can... any bitterness? Like has anyone been... Oh, yeah. Yeah, a, a lot of it. Um, a lot of it, and it's really, um, it's a real, I don't know, it's a real shame. It's just a real shame, because you, if you survive with it in the writer world, you don't deserve to. Mm. And I think you're doing it for the wrong reasons, and I think you're burned out, and I hope you do, and I hope you'll leave. Mm. I hope that, you know, just be kind, supportive, Yeah. let this thing flourish. Because yeah. what we're doing is really, really, really special, I think. Mm-hmm. That, so important to me and we pour so much so many hours into it not knowing whether it's ever going to pan out yeah. or whether we're ever going to make money from it and you know scaring us away from this is so easy mm. um, and would be one of the worst things to do you know like one of the things that makes me so proud in this arena is the people I've got and started writing mm. and they put these things into books and they go I never thought I could do this and then and then I see people that I've met making connections through the podcast or through chats and everything, mm-hmm. and you just see it building, and you're like, I'm responsible for that. You are the but, puppet master, Leo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. It's um, but it's so fragile. Mm. Um, it's uh, it's anyone deserves to be involved if uh, they've got the right attitude about it. How's it been for you? Well, I tell you what, I don't know how it is for men. I don't know if they get the same thing or, or you know. But I've noticed that if you, like, I don't want to say that people know who I am because, like, I am nobody. But I've noticed that the more things I've had published, like, you do tend to get one creepy guy. (laughs) 
Like, um, you'll get one creepy guy for a while and he'll say creepy things and then he'll kind of fall off when he realises he's not getting what he wants, you know, from you. And mm. then um, maybe another one will appear. I mean, I get people I don't know saying really nice things. Like there's one guy who points out um, uh, books that I might be interested in or things like that. You know, I like that. But um, oh, I had some some bloke saying that he was imagining me weeing in a forest. Um, some other guy wanted me to send, <laughs> send him pictures of my feet in fluffy socks. Uh, do you know, like, it just, it's just <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's just really, really odd. So I don't know if that's something that men get so much. Um, I don't know. We get... I mean, I have some people who I don't want to give any attention to who, yeah, mm. for sure, um, I, have, I haven't interacted with them um, in over two years in some cases, but yeah. they just, uh, it's, <laughs> it, it's, I mean, it's what writing is supposed to disturb the comfortable and comfort the disturbed, yeah. but something just disturbs the disturbed who disturb and just keep getting <laughs> just, more disturbed. They just and, keep on a cycle of disturb. Yeah, yeah. and it attracts them. It yeah. attracts them because it's like, like I say, I think that because it's so fragile and vulnerable a thing that can bury my soul in words and you're like, oh, great. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to devour that and I'm going to eat you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I will eat your brain and maybe consume your talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. If that was possible, who would you eat first? <laughs> who would I eat first? Um, that's a difficult one. I, what I would probably do is I'd probably get a load of brains Mm. And squish them together, maybe put them in a blender and and have a brain soup to to drink lots of different forms of talent. Yeah. Kill brain smoothie. Yeah, brain smoothie. <laughs> How about you? Um Yeah, my god, I mean most of them have probably disintegrated by now, so I'd have to rob some graves. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone would really miss them, but I doubt there's anything left. I hope <laughs> maybe a smidgen of micro talent in the dust or something yeah, you can probably have some dna extracted and i can make i can that. make a broth at the bones yeah yeah mm. sounds like a plan we'll, <laughs> we'll be in the news yet leo <laughs> <laughs> yeah. by golly um so like just um to get off the topic of writing what's the weirdest thing because you and i both love the weird side of YouTube, YouTube drama and, and things like that. Mm, yeah. What's the weirdest video or post or anything that you've stumbled across that you've thought, oh, I didn't expect oh, to be here? Okay, weirdest post or something. Oh my God, I find a lot of blogs. Yeah. Big things. Um, now, I, I hope the relevant author doesn't continue to follow me or anything, but somebody sent me a book to review. Yeah. And I was like, had a look at it, thought it was funny, looked up the guy who runs like a pizza gate blog <laughs> and has oh, like no. a Patreon account for it. And I was like, I like I've got to um unfortunately when new people approach me, I'm going to have to vet them a bit better. Yeah. That kind of trust that they're not running a pizza gate blog and I shouldn't have done that, especially yeah. in that case. I yeah, I tend to sort of uh do that as well so like yeah sure whatever and then accidentally stepping crazy you know um yeah. <laughs> like i left a comment once on um because I, I like videos where people like read you their stories and things like that like i just find it really soothing and i, I left a comment on somebody's saying oh you've got a, like a good radio voice or something and then somebody else commented underneath um his voice is as flat as day old beer and I said, okay. And and then he said, um, this is what's been going on or something, the person who commented back. And it was this, uh, what's the site? Kiwi Farms. Have you ever heard of that website? Yeah. Kiwi Farms? Um, anyway, it was like a link to just a wall of madness. It's like Kiwi Farms is like one of those things where different people post where they f they follow someone's bizarre antics and it was this writer lady who oh god what had she been doing oh she she, she was um 
telling everyone that she had a stalker but it actually kind of seemed like she was the stalker and she felt that um, having a stalker was good for um, uh, publicity and it was, oh, I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm, deleting, <laughs> I'm deleting my comment and I'm stepping back. Um, I don't, I don't know if I should say the name, but I'll send you a link. It was, it was crazy. Mm. <laughs> it was like, she was um, filming videos of herself, like taunting her stalker saying, oh, you, you think I'm on drugs? I'm not on drugs. And yeah, it's like. It fascinates me when you you see like people's lives that you have like you have no idea that this kind of thing goes on, you know. Yeah, but then I don't know. It just kind of makes you a little sad because you're like, yeah. well, and then I start trying to like armchair diagnose, and I'm like, clearly, like through my five minutes of Wikipedia, you have like bipolar too. It's like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's, no idea. Yeah. There's so much of that like, yeah it's, it's, it was very odd mm. but fascinating but mm. odd it's a bit like to me it's a bit like seeing someone in the throes of addiction and then when they come after me with a particular message again i'm like here you are relapsing buddy like lying on the floor yeah you should be getting help or something yeah <laughs> it's like um i like to i like watching videos and reading posts of people that i really disagree with politically i find it um, like I just want to know what they're saying and what they think and stuff but mm. sometimes it gets very like conspiracy theory and I think have you just gone off the deep end I don't know you know like um, at what point do different political beliefs just start to become very odd do you know what? I've been thinking about that as well because I um I think I've been very naive in that I trust all the systems, like I trust the police and the government and everything. So then if you have some sort of personal incident where somebody fails you, I think then the whole thing, you're supposed to be allowed to let this stuff run in the background. And when yeah. it fails, you start to go, how deep does this run? And I think it's an extension of some personal pain. Mm. Um, and it's also kind of, to me, it seems like a misunderstanding of science and statistics and just like how much effort you would have to put into creating new knowledge or finding some new theory. They're clearly just like, uh, okay, because this guy wears the red shoes and he's meeting the Pope, this is clearly part of some pizza gate thing, to use a yeah. random example that I may have seen recently. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> but it's like there's loads of the, that kind of thing, isn't there? There's like the whole Hillary was like really ill there's the whole there's the pizza gate thing there's the um what's what's another uh what's the latest thing that i've heard oh the soy theory and you know like you know it's very do you know that one um i've i've heard the term soy boy <laughs> it, understand it, it comes from um this really uh this theory that's been disproved that soy has estrogen in it. It doesn't. It has something that ends in a gin, and it's been proven not to have any effeminizing effect. But uh, people don't really care about that. Like Paul, what's his name? Paul Tom Thomas Watson. Is that his name? No. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson. That's yeah, yeah, Paul yeah. Joseph Watson. He was one of the first to uh, start. Oh, yeah, I got really into that as well. <laughs> All of that. Um... Alex Jones as well. I love oh my watching God, Alex. Alex Jones. Oh my God. You know, my friend Weaven uh, used to watch him for a laugh. Mm. And um, I think he just finds him too annoying now. But um, yeah, it's, I, I find it funny to sort of dip in and out. But if I watch for longer than 10 minutes, I start going, oh, pff, shut up. I feel like I'm contributing or something. But the whole, <laughs> um, there's one that I really like called uh, Theron Meyer. She was like a oh, white yeah. one. You know her? Yeah, yeah. So she, like, when I watch her videos, like, she's consistently learning how to better uh, give her own political opinions. So she doesn't, She I think she started off getting high on the kind of leftist, liberal, nonsense, bashing thing. Yeah. And then realised how divisive that was and was like, okay, what do I actually really believe? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's changed a lot lately. She's yeah. she's undergone quite a massive, uh, she's been talking to ContraPoints, who I really like. Well, there you go. Like, it's all about, it's good to, um, 
it's good to open up and learn what other people's opinions are and it does yeah. it does open your mind to it but then there is a kind of what like the political entertainment thing they call which is just the divisive yeah it's of though the kind of team tribalism yeah. thing yeah um like like I, sorry no i was just gonna say like um there's a podcast i listen to i don't want to say anyone's name because i feel bad because i don't want it to seem like i'm listening to it t- to laugh at them but um it's a, a writer's podcast and it's kind of like part conspiracy theory part massively right wing part i don't know but i don't i just really enjoy listening to it i don't agree with any of it but i just find it really interesting well i think that um you know in all of in all of what i've said it's it's just a kind of wayward curiosity that requires to be satisfied i'm not really like a, even when it comes to the writers i don't like and how bitter they are and everything like i don't i'm not I feel bad about what I said there because I'm not. I feel I just feel bad for them. You know, yeah, it's yeah. not. I, I don't. I don't want to create any enemies. I really um, don't want to add to any of the divisiveness. It's, no, it's I don't weird. feel like I'm listening as an enemy. I feel more like I'm listening out of. I don't know. Just wanting to know, wanting to know what the other the other team are saying. I suppose, if you want to put it that way. I don't yeah. Know. Curiosity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. I, no. No. no honestly carry on oh i do the same like if ever i read an article and then it's just like she like disgraced journalist is fired because of her appearance on the podcast i'm like i want to hear that podcast yes like, <laughs> exactly i would be there immediately i would want to know what, what was said immediately yeah exactly mm. the same i'm so nosy it's probably why i like um really awful programs like <laughs> reality tv and stuff. i'm just nosy like i'll start i'll stop in the street and uh, bill will walk off a ways and then realise that I'm not with him and it's because I'm listening to a conversation of some people oh, nice. so, yeah. yeah. Do you know, I, I find that really affects my creativity here because I can't, I don't know what anyone's saying. That's true, yeah. I get no overheard snippets, but then when I go to London, I'm like, thank God I don't because these people are talking such nonsense. <laughs> yeah. I heard this one, like, it's so, sometimes I hear conversations that are so mundane, it just shocks me to my core. Yeah. It, one would bother their time talking about this kind of thing maybe that's part of the curiosity thing yeah with this one like i i probably will be able to repeat it verbatim because it's so disturbing to me one woman says like a <laughs> i wrote a blog post about this as well it's like uh have you seen the new marks and spencer's christmas advert first of all <laughs> what can like no Who shut that, about down. that? Yeah. Maybe, I have, maybe i haven't who cares yeah. and the other woman says Yes, I have, but I prefer the John Lewis Christmas advert, right? That's a real thing, isn't it? People go mad over it. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes like this huge... um, Yeah, on Twitter, there's this guy with the name John Lewis. And Mm. every year he's tagged like thousands of times of people saying, oh, I love your advert, I love your... And him saying, I'm not that John Lewis, (laughs) please stop. I think, it's, I think it was praise for good work. That's fine, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, this woman added, like, in fact, I tweeted at Marks and Spencer's, hey, Marks and Spencer's, look at John Lewis's Christmas advert. Like, where's yours or something? Yeah. What are you going to do? I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, you're way, you're just way too into this. Yeah. I feel like that with a lot of um, people on the internet as well, actually. Like, um there were these two YouTubers that broke up, like were in a relationship and they broke up and their fans are so into it. Like their fans are really invested. And Mm. I find that more interesting than the breakup. Like just looking at how upset fans get and things like that. Mm. It's like, it's very strange. It's like- Both of us got so invested in the H3 H3 lawsuit last year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was really fascinating. Yeah. And, like, being a fan of them, it did feel like a huge relief when finally... It was, yeah. Because yeah. that's kind of... Um, that kind of dictated what was going to happen with YouTube videos as well, like, as a whole, I suppose, you know? It was, like, it was a really important thing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. You don't make videos, do you? No, I might do. Hmm. I don't know. Um... It's just a podcast for now, but I think videos would be more popular. Mm. 
I don't know, I think they both have their appeal for different reasons. I think um, uh, if I'm feeling writerly, say, I'll listen to a, a podcast, I think. Um, yeah, probably. So I think um, for people who want more um, to listen to stuff about writers and things like that, it's probably the podcast, I don't know. Maybe mm. either, I don't know. Because also, I mean, I, I feel like my podcast is still taking shape. And from what I've heard from the people who listen to it, they're more interested just in the people behind the books rather than yeah. the process and everything. So um, I don't know. But I think it would be nice as well if I could collaborate with people who were in the room. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it'd be Indeed. good to have like um, a writer's group, like in the flesh. But I think um, the good thing about the internet is that it, you know, um, you can at least have a writer's group even if it's online. Mm. Um, whereas um, without the internet, you were it was just you, unless you could find people and make them be in your writer's group. So yeah, no, the, you know, either way, online, in person, it's good. But uh, yeah, I, I have yet to see, um, hopefully I'll stay in touch with these people that I meet tomorrow, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, no, I just remembered another weird thing online that I stumbled across. Um, there was this guy who used to be a vegan and then he became a, um, what is it when a mukbang person you know like mukbang right this this whole thing where you eat more than you can handle and people just watch it it's like literally um almost a table full of food it's like an abnormal amount of food and people eat and they talk and people love it but anyway uh he does these and he in this video that i stumbled across had no idea who he was anything and he um, had ordered an Uber and the Uber didn't show up and he was crying and he's a grown man and he was crying because the Uber hadn't showed up and his cheesecake was ruined in the bag. And it's just like really <laughs> worrying. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, what's, is he okay? You know, what does this mean? <laughs> so, but then I think mate, he was probably just being dramatic because it gets views. You know, you never okay. know. I think that was probably what it was. I don't know. Yeah, that. I mean, that'll be like some Logan Pauls. Like he'll go. His contribution to humanity will be some sort of footnote in a psychology thing. We'll just be like, <laughs> this guy went way off the deep end online. Yeah, yeah. Pop, like YouTube itis. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to study like the psychology of fans of YouTubers because it almost seems like. Um, pagan mystery cults you know when each group had their own individual god and um they had to do all weird things like there was one god where everyone like cut off their nuts and like all the men <laughs> cut off their nuts and they had like really weird like things that bonded them together so it's, mm. it's like a mystery cult it's interesting <laughs> i might do that as a story but youtubers <laughs> oh yeah i think so i mean every time we've talked to, or like communicated we come up with at least one story idea <laughs> yeah I think that, that would work, yeah. <laughs> Good one. Uh, but no, I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm too worried to explore a lot of this stuff because I'm worried it'll stick to me. Mm. I'll, I'll accidentally like something and then start, I'll go on a weird newsletter or something and never get off it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's like, um, once you go down the rabbit hole of one person, then you find all this, this other stuff and yeah, it's interesting. But you mm -hmm. can get stuck <laughs> for hours. <laughs> oh, I have a question for you. Mm. Um, Veronica. Oh. Uh, did you like that film? Am I going to ruin I'm your life? Pardon? I was terrified by it. Really? Because I think a lot of people liked it, didn't they? Mm. I think with me, with horror, it has to either be weird, very weird, or very subtle. I don't know what that was very subtle um like i don't know if you saw lake mungo um but i that scared the crap out of me it's like a, a fairly new ish australian film lake mungo and okay. it's like supernatural very subtle i think when it comes to like actiony 
action-y horror type things I'm not so keen so yeah I didn't find it that scary I wasn't wasn't that into it I thought it was okay, okay. it was watchable because like um it looked like where Juan and I stayed in Spain and then he looked it up and it was like this actual Spanish girl oh and yeah I don't know that just gave us more of a connection to it but we can be super scary but no recently like, I was going to watch this new insidious thing oh yeah and- I just watched the trailer for it and I was like, that just looks terrifying. That's an experience I can do without, actually. Like, I'm not going to watch that. I want to watch that because um, I lo- the first one's just balmy and that's I love it. Um, mm. And so I think the, all, the others in between were not by the same person, so this one is. So I'm quite looking forward to it, actually. So. Oh, okay, so it's probably better. Yes. Hopefully. Mm. Hopefully. Probably not. But we'll see. <laughs> Uh, so. I liked him. Um, what was it? The Babadook. That seemed like yeah. a good trend because you know it was clever, but there were no jump scares. It was all about dread. Yeah, that's, that's what I like. That yeah, mm. I liked the Babadook. I thought it was very effective. Mm. <sighs> I don't know. I'm very. Uh, I'm on my lady time at the moment, so I'm very blank. So okay. if, <laughs> if you can think of any uh, thing to add at all. Um, yes, yeah, sure. no, of course. I know I have my own questions, but I seriously, like, before we talked, I slept on the couch for like two hours. <laughs> um, it may be because I'm not like I've because I quit drinking and now I'm not drinking coffee anymore either. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the coffee is tougher. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. So yeah. I'm also just because I, I had to go. Like, I went out yesterday for only like 50 minutes and just sat in the sun, even though it's freezing. Mm. That's the most sunlight I've gotten in months. So I'm really. It's really affecting me a lot, and I hope that it's uh, it's over. It's yeah, over, you know. caffeine. I don't know if I could do without caffeine. I mean, I stopped drinking alcohol. That's fine, but caffeine. Mm. I don't think <laughs> I don't think I could do it. Isn't Norway? Isn't one of those places where it's like sun for a month and then night time for a month? Is it? Or is it, it kind of feels like that film Thirty Days of Night? Yeah, I think all the time. I just think it's like that because, like, for months I've been leaving in darkness mm. there have been a few hours of sun in the afternoon while i've been in the office and then i'll leave in darkness again so it just feels like permanent darkness for months and it really um really gets to me in particular but i i, I think it gets to everyone but i work with a lot of because i'm an engineer i work with a lot of men mm. and men just don't generally notice things so they're like it doesn't affect me yeah. i'm just this much of a dick <laughs> like, I, don't think you, I don't think you are actually i think you've just not noticed that you too are affected by this yeah um but yeah, but they're big coffee drinkers here as well. Like they'll have four or five a day. Mm. It's just strange. Yeah, I drink a lot of tea. I don't like coffee. I love the smell of it, but ugh, so bitter. Yeah, but tea, I don't think is. There's a bit less caffeine in that. Probably, yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. So, just horror films. You discussed. That was the thing. And um, do you think you would ever start your own literary magazine? No, because um, I uh, I'm not that keen on pressure in the sense of organising other people. Like I'm okay focusing on myself because then it's only me that I'm you know um, like letting down or whatever. But trying to organise other people, I I think I'd find that very frustrating. Do you yeah. do you do that? Well, no, no, I was involved in a, a project for Dead Man's Tome like around this time last year where uh, I coordinated stories that had already been selected. Mm-hmm. But I found that I was like, sometimes I'd, it was very hard to keep everyone on the same page. Yeah. Sometimes I would ask a little question after I'd already done something about something I'd already done. And I was yeah. like, oh, crap, can I reverse that now for their sake? Do I need to do that? Are they going to be okay with it if I say I already did, the, did this? And I just, um, I find it very difficult to, you know, I well, I think if I had a coherent set of rules about it, mm. but no, because I mean, something I think, I think I would be okay about it on a good day, but if somebody sent me a rubbish story and I was already feeling like down in the dumps, I would take it as a personal offence, <laughs> yeah. which I know it isn't. Yeah. You didn't try doing hard enough, yeah. But there's, there's no... Um, 
you know, again, like it's very, and I know the thing about the bitterness within this community, I think it's very easy because it's like, it's a lot of work yeah. for very slim possible returns. I see where it develops and I, 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 um, I, I understand it from that perspective. So I may, I don't think I should have been as harsh about it as I was, but um, yeah, I want to avoid, I want to avoid any kind of new stimulus that could create new bitterness because I know. Mm. Yeah, me too. What, to yeah. what message or what did somebody say that, I mean, don't like say anything. Oh, let's see what it is. What was um, the bitter? Just trying, trying to involve me in, um, backhanded discussions about third parties that weren't there yeah um in a real schoolyard bullshit way that i thought was long gone yeah like a decade plus ago and to see it resurface its head and think that i would be involved in it was just really insulting because you know it's kind of if you like if you genuinely liked my fiction um hopefully you think it's from somebody who's reasonably intelligent and empathetic mm-hmm and who would not engage in these kind of things. And then if you reviewed something nicely of mine and then you tried to involve me in something like that, it makes me feel like you didn't understand what I was doing or, or what any of us are doing. And um, another thing that I see is, you know, with, with like very successful authors are quite approachable. And then I see people approach them and I wonder why they're doing it because, mm. you know, okay, so somebody is lauded by a great number of publishers and they're being promoted as the next big thing. Do you personally understand why their fiction is great or are you following it? Are you following only the prestige and what is your motivation for talking to these people? Mm-hmm. So when it comes to my own podcast, of course, I, I think I could draw a bigger audience over and over if I interviewed only the biggest people I could find. Um, but that's, and that, that's a, uh, I mean, expansion is part of it, but I wouldn't make it the main reason. Um, I think in a kind of podcast-flooded domain, what you want is originality, which comes from honesty about your own taste. Yeah. I would much rather interview you and talk about your work because that's something I found of my own accords, and you're somebody whose work I genuinely appreciate. Um, so it, it just gets very muddled, and I understand why it gets muddled, because you really want to... Um, you want to get out of this with fans and knowing that you've done something worthwhile and that's not guarantee. And it leads you to expedient pathways that, mm-hmm. that, um, you know, you maybe you're not questioning them properly. I don't know. It's just very, it's just very weird. But the thing, the thing I've been thinking about recently is like, if you know, if you are friends with a very famous author, it's a bit like, going, yeah, I went out for drinks with Elon Musk and, like, next week I'll start my own space program. Yeah. It's like, nobody's saying you also have the skills just because you know somebody who does. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and, and if, if, if you know, and nobody would consciously go after somebody famous and think that's true. Mm-hmm. But if you subconsciously think that, you should question it because um, it's, it's distracting you from just getting better at your craft, which is... We should be sp- focusing most of your time doing, and then, you know, twenty percent of it can be, you know, chatting to various people. If you're just having like fanboy glee after somebody you genuinely love, mm. go nuts. But um, I, it just gets very. I just I I um like you. You know, it's like you want to think the best of people, and I don't want to have to start questioning people's motivations to approach me. Mm. Um, but it gets confusing. Yeah. I don't even remember what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true though. Dear. Yeah, no, I, t- I tend to think the best of people until they're a creepy guy asking me to we in a forest or something. <laughs> wear fluffy socks. Or wear fluffy socks. Yeah. I'm the same. I kind of try and think the best of people as well. Mm. But, um, yes, it's a minefield. I try and sort of stick to... Um, just being online friends with authors who I get on with, you know, I don't want to have to see a bunch of tweets on a timeline that by people that I don't really get on with. It seems like a waste of energy to me, you know, whether they're famous or not. I just, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because, like, through social media, you have, like, it's a good idea to expand your network as, 
as big as possible, I suppose, in which case you're going to have to, but I don't know whether that means you have to associate with bigger pools of people who are less vetted. Yeah. No? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yes. I don't know, man. I don't know either. <laughs> it's just um, it's just how do you go about it authentically it's a tough task for everyone it is difficult and I think there is always going to be an element of um, like making friends with people who um, you feel kind of bad you know like you kind of feel like oh I am being the networking person but I think as long as you try and maybe do it honestly and um, not too crawly crawly <laughs> mm-hmm. or, or just like, re- like I think be prepared for people to say no, you know, if, if you're going to ask someone to like say a reviewer, if you're going to ask someone to review something of yours or something like that, be prepared for people to say no and, and don't expect things of people, I guess is what I found always helps me, you know? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, let no be the expected response. And yeah. you know, nobody owes you anything. Yeah. And if they say yes, then that's a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's true for sure. And, you know, once you get to a certain level, be, like start saying no yourself because yeah. time is limited. And Yeah. See, I've, I have actually had a couple of people ask me to read stuff but I don't really know why because I don't have a publishing house or anything. I just have been published by other people. But it's, mm-hmm. but I'm not the one in charge of that kind of thing. So I don't really know what I could have done. And, and I at the time said yes because I meant to read it and then I didn't have time and then I pretended that it never happened. <laughs> and, but I think in future I, I won't say yes because I have got other, you know, I mean, if I purposefully go and find someone's book and I want to read it, then that's one thing. But I don't always have time to, like, read stuff that people want me to read. It's There's a lot of things to read, you know, yeah. in your day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, What about... Uh, hey, did you see... This was on my list. That's why I'm asking. Did you see RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 3? No, I haven't. Oh, I haven't, haven't seen it, no. Is it good? It's fantastic. It's the best one yet. Oh. Like, they're so talented. Yeah. And, like, a lot of them have come back from previous seasons and they've, like, they've improved so much. It's so satisfying to watch. Yeah, that's good. Because I, I want to sit down and watch loads of them. Because uh, for some reason, and I have no idea why, I haven't watched it. And you'd think it would be something that I would immediately watch. But I just haven't got around to it. Which mm. is weird. So I am gonna gonna make an effort to watch loads of them. Not seen any of it. Well, I like I would start with season four because it's a bit like. <laughs> is that the one with Sharon Needles? Which is that one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because like bef- that's by the end of by then they've gotten a budget and like yeah enough applying queens that they're like from a big enough pool that a lot of them are actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely want to watch that. There was a crossover with um, Drag Race and Top Model, but um. I was expecting like this huge, like huge costumes, and then it was a bit normal. So you know, it wasn't that good. But uh, yeah, Drag Race is something I've been meaning to watch. Hmm. Okay, do you have more questions? No, no, that's fine. Okay, um, I I'm not very good physically today, so I've been a bit lame. I'm sorry, but. Um, it's always nice to talk to you. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay. <laughs> Farewell. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh. Uh.